good morning. Is mid-century modern dead or is it alive? And I know the design questions will be answered today on Behind the Gavel with Jason. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, we do this every week and this week we're talking about uh, mid-century modern design. Is it a, is it a, is it a, is it a going concern? Is it going to be di dead? Is it, um, just trying to share this on my page here real quick. And uh, what are you guys seeing in the marketplace? I tell you, here at the Casey Auction Company, we're seeing that there is still demand. Let's, so let's, talk, let's step back for a couple of seconds. When we talk about mid-century modern, mid-century design, what are we talking about? Uh, mid-century modern uh, is historically known as the er, ge generation of furniture made in the, basically shortly after World War II, so 45, 48, through the mid-60s. And it covers everything from, you know, tables and chairs, bedroom furniture, art, lighting, silver, jewelry, the whole, it, it, it encompassed everything. It was, it was a really popular, long-lasting movement that really gained attention and traction in the secondary markets in the 90s when Kara Greenberg published her book on the subject of the same. <clears throat> and so what is it, what's the market looking like today for it? Um, and, and what differences are people looking for? And what should you be considering when you're looking at either buying and decorating or curating for yourself big difference in decorating curating and or when you're looking to liquidate the estate of a friend or a loved one what are things that the market's looking for and so you know i've been seeing some articles you know design trends what's on point what's not and mid-century modern is still talked about in, in, in mostly a positive light i think that we're on the way down and i can just looking at the responses we've gotten from pieces in the last year or so, I can pretty well prove that. And I can also, based on anecdotal evidence with people in the industry, people who do estate sales and auctions, the vast, what used to sell really well doesn't sell just because it's mid-century, uh, I think is the biggest takeaway. And let me just clarify real quick, also mid-century versus contemporary. Contemporary is new furnishings. They might look like they're mid-century designed with the clean lines and Spartan looks but mid-century is a very specific time frame. And that's one of the big issues we have and, and our clients and customers are having. Hey, Rochelle, how are you doing? Thanks for watching. Um, one of the big things that we're seeing is there's been, it's been around as a popular medium for so long. We're talking 20 years, 25, 30, almost 25 years now as a catch-all, be-all phrase. And what's happened is, and it's happening more and more and more, uh, are as people watch as people start using mid-century modern for anything made in the 50s and 60s, it's diluting the brand of mid-century modern in design. And so when antique dealers who know next to nothing about a piece other than it was made in 1957, put it out there and call it mid-century, as a time frame, they're correct, but as a style, they're awfully not correct at all. And so we're seeing that it's, it's having an adverse effect on the market in general because there's a lot of confusion. And the other thing that we're noticing, and, and, I've, and I'm reading this more and more and more, uh, Justin Riordan, who's the lead architect to Spade and Archer Design, they said they stopped buying mid-century modern for their clients two years ago, and they're going to much more Mediterranean style, uh, brutalist, the generation of furnishers and furnishings shortly after mid-century modern. And so we're kind of seeing that too. But one of the reasons they said it, and if you have questions or thoughts or comments, please post them here while we're going along. I'll try and answer them as we can. Thanks, Karen and Rochelle, for watching and others who are that I can't see. Um, and share this on your page if you think people you know would be interested. One of the things that Justin said, and I agree completely, is it's becoming very pedestrian. Anybody and everybody throws up mid-century modern as if it's the end-all be-all. And when it becomes such a mass saturation, it loses the appeal. Um, the other thing that he talked about, actually Ryan Corbin in Vogue talking about design trends, talked about people are going much more for a curated look as opposed to a decorated look. And what he means by that, and we're seeing this in half or quite some time, is people aren't necessarily looking for an entire statement in a room, uh, a, a monotony or a monot uh, monochromatic or whatever. They want pieces to stand on their own. I call it the Fraser effect. Uh, you know, I'm old enough that I watch you know, TV live. I watch TV shows 
on TV. I still do to a degree. Uh, well, we had commercials, but Frasier, the big uh, hit sitcom in the back in the 90s and uh, 2000s, talked about the Eames chair didn't have to have 50s furniture next to it because it was a classic piece on its own alongside the Regency, alongside the Federal. P classic pieces, well-designed pieces stand on their own. And that's the curated effect. And so we're seeing that more and more and more people like a various, like a specific piece for a specific spot, but they don't need to design the room around that piece anymore. Um, some of the other things that I saw and have read uh, in that same Vogue article, both Miles Red and Catherine Ireland, who are well-respected designers, both talked about chintz becoming popular again. And chintz, remember back in the day, is a very heavy pattern, heavily patterned, uh, you know, all over pattern on a piece, usually floral. And, there, and that entirety, that mindset is actually playing out in different ways. Um, people are not going with that sparse look anymore. It's rare that you see in design a very minimalist platform, a very minimalist scene. It's much, usually much more engaged and much more, there's a lot more depth to the design, uh, I think is a good way to put it, where people are just wanting to enjoy and experience their lives in a way that isn't just completely stark and empty. Um, Jessica Isaac from Apartment, Apartment Therapy says that everybody's house looks the same if you do mid-century modern. And there's much truth to that because Danish teak looks like Danish teak. There are differences, but if you've been in five houses and they all have Danish teak table and six chairs in the dining room, their red looks relatively the same. Um, and she says that the 80s decor, Memphis style, is on the rise, and I think that's been true for a while. The other thing that I'm seeing a lot and I'm seeing a, a lot of this in Instagram, I'm seeing a lot of this in the different design magazines and things along those lines, is what's being called boho chic or boho gypsy. Uh, boho is short for bohemian, and it's just that kind of almost earthy, uh, a lot of rattans, a lot of natural colors, a lot of textures, you know, uh, macrame flower, and the, the, the macrame hanging flower pots and things like that uh, back in the 70s and 80s. That entire style is really getting popular and really catching on. I have friends on Instagram who are always posting those decor sign designs and selling a lot in that space. Uh, I'm surprised, often, you know, I, I see them post things that a few years ago would have been thrown in the trash after the estate sale. Uh, they're selling for 50, 75, $100 and more uh, because it's today's taste and, and style. And I think it's because it en engages people it has texture, it has color, it has depth. And I see more and more people are doing that. Hey, thanks for the comment, Karen. Uh, how are things down in Texas? It's pretty warm up here again today. Rochelle, stopped Memphis. Rochelle says, Memphis style is definitely on its way. I saw a person at market last week. Yeah, I saw a lot of your pictures there, Rochelle, and videos. It was really interesting to see that from uh, through the lens a little bit. Uh, a lot of the contemporary designs are Memphis, but also very clean and contemporary. But there was a lot of, I saw the, the, the patio furniture you showed that was incredibly ornate, it looked like Victorian furniture or today's version of it. And it was outdoor patio furniture in just incredibly bold, vivacious colors. Uh, I don't know if I would like that personally, but I see why that appeals to people. Color is becoming so popular and so powerful. You know, for years we've had the grage, the restoration uh, home, uh, restoration, uh, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, you know, the grays and the blacks and the darks just overrunning everything grayish beige and and so on and so forth um but we're seeing people are very interested in color very interested in texture very interested in depth and really having a personality in your space it was i look like you had more fun with it than we did back here in kansas city rochelle but watching your videos and and, and uh and pictures was a lot of fun but people are looking to really express themselves in their design in their homes anymore, much more so than having, I live in a mid-century house, I live in a this, that, and the other thing. Uh, and that is, I think, different now than ever before. And there's always been very defined uh, areas. <laughs> I won't say the H word then, uh, but RH, I think everybody knows what I'm talking about. Thanks for, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't pull, I wanna say Restoration Emporium, uh, our friends Jeff and, uh, Christy down there in the plaza now, who started out as neighbors years ago, uh, in old RH space and doing a better job, I think. But we're seeing that, you know, that depth of character and people really wanting to take ownership of their space as opposed to being the lemming. And I think we've talked about this many, many times on this platform and on others. 
if you are interested in any kind of a design aspect now you can find what you're looking for you can find your tribe the boho chic tribe you can find if you like victorian furnishings you can find people who like it like you do and feel like you're not weird like you're not an outsider you can find those folks who really appreciate what you appreciate i think the chintz coming back is really interesting in that it's often been compared with that stuffy old person grandma's house um and not in a positive way necessarily but i think it's really starting to be embraced um you know there's always that you know longing for the past that drives design uh, but generally it's been longing for the past in different ways and, and that's not uh, one that we've generally seen before so I'm getting ready to sign off here. Uh, next week, I'm going to be talking about how to sell major collections. We've had several come through the doors this year, and it's a question we're asked regularly. And we're really seeing some interesting things on our end when we, when we present them, uh, as far as response and, and interaction. And I know that uh, Granny Sheik, yeah, Granny Sheik, Boho Sheik and Granny Sheik are, 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 cro are crossing paths quite a bit now. Absolutely right. Rochelle knows all the terms. If you're in Kansas City and need a design expert, upholstery expert, Rochelle is spectacular. She knows that stuff like the back of her hand. Um, but next week we're going to be talking about selling major collections and interesting and unusual collections. It's easy to sell a collection of, you know, coins because it's a pretty static market. But how do you sell a collection of artwork from an artist who's unknown? How do you sell a collection of marionettes? Uh, how do you sell a collection of political ephemera from a, a, a retired politician that uh, isn't necessarily old and, and, and things like that, but how you still get the, the attra attention and attraction and get the value out of it that you, that you want to get. So next we're going to talk about selling major collections, large collections. Um, this weekend I'm excited. My wife, Stacy, and I are taking the boys up to Des Moines, Iowa to meet Marina, our, our niece, who is about three and a half, four months old now. We're really excited to do that and see my brother and daughter or sister-in-law and so other than that if you have questions go ahead and post them here if you're watching this in the future uh post the questions here just send us a direct message uh or a link it's been an exciting week here at the auction house we've had a great collection come in of uh, marionettes it's kind of why it's at top of mind right now uh the dolores hadley collection uh she worked at worlds of fun for 20 plus years and other places before and after that and the family has decided it's time to sell the rest of the collection. There's about 65 or 70 marionettes. And then puppets and static figures and backdrops and all kinds of vaudevillian theater uh, pieces that will be super fun to show and sell. And we're already getting a lot of interest in that. We're finishing up the Feral Collection. Again. That catalog will be online here by the end of the day. Hi, Andy. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you tuning in here before we wrap it up. And uh, we had a collection, small collection of art he shipped up from Georgia, another artist estate uh, who's a little bit better known, but not uh, much, but this is directly from the family. So it's an exciting week here at the Casey Auction Company. If you have questions, post them here, drop us a direct message. You can always give us a phone call at 816-283-3633. Drop us an email, info at kcauctioncompany.com and follow the Facebook page, Instagram page for daily updates on what's happening, what's coming up and what's going on. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any, we look forward to talking to you in the future and have a great weekend.